but see if you can make sense of it. Um, the second thing is you should have your textbook with you as you go through this. Um, please uh, use that to help you as well. Um, and remember, of course, that you are expected to come and talk to me during the lesson um, about anything that you don't make sense. I do not expect all of this to get through into your brain's first time. I do want you to make as much of an effort as you can, though. Um, you should have your flipped learning booklet with you as well. That's the topic notes. Um, please fill this out as we go along, but again, feel free to just pause the video, take down notes whenever you want, um, particularly making sure that you pay attention to the definitions and the equations that you need. And I've also put questions in that booklet as you go along that'll help you to have your own record of what we're doing. So, let's not waste any more time, let's think about books law. Um, so the objective of this lecture is for you to understand how springs and any other material that's stretchy um, behaves when deformed. And deformed in this case, the physics word to mean changing its shape. Um, so what I really hope is that you can all, by the end of this video, uh, state and use Hooke's law and any key terms from this video. Um, I also hope that you can all describe how to find the spring constant, um, which um, seems to be a pretty uniquely, uh, oops, excuse me, um, which seems to be a fairly unique thing to CIE um, that they sometimes call the force, the, the, what everyone else calls uh, the spring constant, CIE calls the force constant. If you see the two words, they mean exactly the same thing. Um, and I would. Mm -hmm. And I would like you, if you can, to start to consider non-spring materials. In other words, things like elastic, rope, anything else. That's not necessary for today's lesson, but in the next coming lessons you might go into that. Okay, so we're doing this materials topic. Why does this stuff matter? Why is this an important topic? Um, well, engineering is all about materials and, and how materials behave. And we rely a lot on the fact that a lot of materials will behave predictably. So for example, if you look at the uh, support structures here in this bridge, they're just very long steel cables and then they drop down like that. We really need to know how that steel will behave when we put loads on the bridge to make sure that it can hold the weight. Um, similarly, concrete has a very different set of properties to steel, um, but you will see just outside of Monchiara down the road, we have uh, concrete highways. So we really need to know that the concrete is going to behave again in a predictable way so that we can work out what forces to put on it. Um, a thing that comes up a lot in exam questions, because it's a really good application of this, is thinking about lifts. So above the lifts there are some high tensile strength steel cables that go up to the top, um, go over a pulley and then drop back down. So we have all these sorts of interesting forces acting here where we've got uh, tension in the cables, uh, we've got the weight of the uh, lift pulling it down and we really need to know again how will the material behave for this to work. Um, but it's not just limited to engineering and structures. Um, if you think about shirts like Under Armour, if we want this fine specimen of a man to be really well defined in his abs, um, we need a material that's tight enough to deform around him, um, but one that won't break, one that won't tear. So even if you're not thinking about going to a career in physics, this stuff might be really, really relevant to you. Um, and the real goal of physics, the goal of all physics all the time, is to take all of these separate things and put them into one set of equations. We need maths, and maths is what will help us to explain what's going on. So let's think about stretching stuff. Um, when we stretch stuff or deform it, um, there are three different definitions that you need. So pushing stuff together, that means if I get something and I have forces acting on it from each end. We call that in physics a compressive force. The other one is stretching stuff apart. So if I try and pull something apart, that, has a, that is called a tensile force. Um, and generally, we expect that the extension is proportional to the force. So we expect it to look something like this. And this is an experiment that you've done before. You should see that we have a spring here. Now we call that spring of length L. Usually we use L for the length. Now what you've probably done at GCSE, especially if you, were, if you had me last year, I know you've done this, um, is we hang a mass on the end of that spring. Now that mass produces a force acting downwards mg. So we can say often force is equal to weight 
which is mg. But it can be any force. The force can be due to anything. And what we often find is that the extension, here I've called it x, um, so we could say x is equal to the extension, but sometimes we call it, instead of x, we call it delta L. Now delta, this symbol delta, that means change. So delta L, that means change in length. Um, so, you might, so we often see that if we have a force of mg acting on it, then we get, so mg, let me change the colour, there we go, mg here, that causes extension x. And what we usually find is that most things deform predictably. So if I have 2mg here, that's 2mg because I've got 1mg in this mass, or 1 and then 1 mg in this mass, so I get 2 mg total, and I find that I get 2 x as my deformation. So if I were to think of this as a graph, where I have force here and I have extension here, I expect a straight line like that. And straight lines, it turns out, are really important and really useful to physics. So if we think about this, this is the classic thing that we do a lot of in physics. Here I have a nice straight line graph. And you should remember from your GCSE that the equation for a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c. So y is just your y-axis value, m is the gradient, x is your x-axis, and c is your y-intercept. Now what you'll notice is that m and c are both constants. That is, they are a number that doesn't change. And a big part of what we try to do in physics is to find these constants. So what you're going to find yourself doing again and again and again as you go through your physics career is you are trying to force something to be m and force something to be c. And that's going to make a lot more sense in the next part of the video. Okay, so let's do a classic experiment. A really classic experiment we do is we, I'm going to cross out here where it says strain, and I'm going to put, for now, I'm going to put extension. So we measure how much we've extended something by against a force. Don't worry about me crossing out stress and strain. They're for you in a future lesson. You're not going to miss out. Um, so what we can do is we can say, well, if we look at this part of the graph only, this section is a straight line. Now, it being a straight line means we can do something quite cool. We can say, well, what actually is my y-axis? In this case, my y-axis is the force. What is my x-axis? My x-axis is the extension. And then we can go one further. We can say, well, what is c? c is the y-intercept. And in this case, we can see it goes through the origin, so I can say that, that is equal to zero. So what I get now is I can say that the force, I'm going to say force is F, and I'm going to say extension is this symbol delta L. Again, remember delta means change. So I can say that F is equal to M multiplied by delta L plus zero. And obviously because it's plus zero, I don't actually need to include it. So I can say F is equal to M delta L. Now this is the true essence of what proper physics is all about. What I've done is I've taken a set of experimental results, so I could have gone and just plotted a load of crosses along here, da -da 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 -da. those are my points, and I've said, right, forget about just having a nice new graph for the sake of having a graph, let's use the graph for something really useful. And we can use that to start looking at this value m. What does m actually mean? Well, it means the gradient of this graph but it can mean something more. We can call this M the force constant. Now, what does a force constant mean? A force constant is basically the stiffness of a spring. And we usually give it the letter K. So we can rewrite this as F is equal to K delta L. You might see it often written as F is equal to KX, where X is the extension. 
Now, what do I mean by this? What this is telling me is that I now have a constant uh, change in my extension for any given force. So I can say, let's say k is equal to 10. If k is equal to 10, and I want an extension of 2, that means that f will be equal to 10 times 2, so that tells me I need a force of 20. Now, as I'm sure you know, it's very bad practice to just have a force of 20, we need a unit. So, we're going to say that force is always in newtons, extension must always be in meters. So, what does k have to be in? This is your next A-level trick that's quite important to master. Um, to find a constant, to find a, a value of a, a, something's units, what we're going to say is rearrange this equation into uh, f equals, sorry, k equals. So I can rearrange this and say that k is equal to f divided by x. Now, f is measured in newtons, x is measured in meters, so I can say that k has the units units of newtons per meter. And we always write per as uh, the thing raised to the power of negative one. If you're not sure about why that is, ask me in our next lesson, okay? So, we now say that spring at uh, pulse constant k has the units of newtons per meter. Now that means that the spring constant is telling us how many newtons of force we need in order to get a single meter of extension. Now, what you will notice here is that I have some points on the graph A, B and C. For now, the only thing that we need to think about, to uh, worry about ourselves, is A. And the point A is called the limit of proportionality. Now, this equation here, f is k delta l or f is kx, that only works if we have this nice straight line here. So you can see that at a, it stops obeying the law f is equal to kx. So we need a, a name for this, and we call it limit proportionality, because you can see that proportional means it goes off in a straight line. So at point A, it is no longer proportional. The final thing we need to do is we say, well, we've got this lovely uh, rule here, so it would be a shame uh, if we were to just leave it at that. So we always like to name our rule. So we call this Hooke's Law. So we can sum this up as saying that the limit of proportionality is at the point where, sorry, is the point where a material stops obeying Hooke's law. <coughs> so that was a really quick uh, introduction to uh, some of the other physics we're going to do today. What you'll be doing in the next lesson is actually working out uh, the spring constant or the force constant for a range of different materials. So what I suggest you do now is have a look through your notes, have a look through your textbook, and see if you can come up with a plan for what you're going to do. Because in our lesson on Thursday, I'm just going to give you a big old bunch of springs and different materials, and I'm going to expect you to plan your own experiment to find K. Now, here's the important thing. We're not going to do it by taking a single pair of data points like saying, here's two points there and there, and working out K. I want you to work it out from a gradient. So, if you finish this video in good time, it should have only taken you about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, you still have plenty of homework time left. See if you can work out how you're going to find the spring constant of different things using a graph of your results. And I'll see you in our lesson.